Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope your night or day is going good. Sorry about no intro song. I'm having trouble putting it in. My editor isn't working right at this current time. Fortunately, I'm still able to post verses into these videos when I'm, when I'm talking. And I've had people ask me before, how are you able to reference these verses so fast in your videos? And it's because they're all committed to memory. And I would recommend that people do that. Because when I've had conversations with people and I've quoted verses, there's some things that are said in the verse that can be lost if it's not memorized. I can quote a verse, and then if I was asked someone, can you please quote that back for me, they wouldn't be able to quote it back in its entirety, which means there were things that were lost. That when I quoted the scripture to them, it went in one ear and out the other, and it's just a common thing. If you don't have it memorized, that's what usually happens. And that's why after the fact, when I'm editing these videos, I'll post the scripture in. So they stay on screen and printed on your in your mind so you can read it. And that's how it is when you memorize scripture. It, it's just like it is on screen. It stays up there in your mind and you can meditate and marinate over it and get the full meaning of what it's trying to say. Having said all that, I want to get into these passages, very interesting passages. I'm going to start off with three of them that have very interesting implications when you consider what they're saying. I'll put them on the screen so we can meditate on it. Now here in this passage, Paul says, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, and with it the hope of eternal glory. I think this is an important passage because I've noticed that the free will people will say that once you have salvation, then you're chosen. You're chosen to be adopted and predestined into God's family. Once you have salvation, once you've made that right choice and you are saved, then you're part of the chosen once you're saved. But see, this passage is telling us that we're part of the chosen before we're even saved. That before people are even saved, they're chosen for salvation. I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation. So it's talking about people that are chosen that have not obtained salvation yet. See, the free will perspective is that once you have salvation, God then chooses you. Once you've already made the right choice for Jesus, then and you're saved, then God chooses you to be predestined unto adoption. So what they say in a lot of their posts and in a lot of their videos is that once you have salvation, then you're part of the chosen. But we can see from Paul's words that you're part of the chosen before you even have salvation. I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen that they also may obtain salvation. People that have already been chosen but they haven't obtained salvation yet. This is completely opposite of what the free will crowd has been teaching in their community posts and on their videos because they say once you have salvation then you're chosen once you've already obtained salvation then you're part of the chosen see the bible says the very opposite see they're twisting scripture to say something that it doesn't say they're they're turning it on its head they're turning it backwards i endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen that they also may obtain salvation so before people even obtain salvation, they've already been chosen by God to be saved. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, beloved of the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. So we see that before people even obtain salvation, God chooses them to be saved. He chooses them for salvation. And Paul is saying, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, not the collective entirety of humanity. So when you're reading those posts by the free will advocates, you'll notice, notice how they say that once you have salvation, then you're part of the chosen, you're part of the elect, once you have salvation. But Paul the Apostle is clearly indicating that people are chosen before they even have salvation, before they've even obtained it. Now the scripture teaches just as people are chosen before they even obtain salvation, they are appointed to eternal life before they even believe. When the Gentiles heard this, they glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. Now the free will perspective is once you believe, then you have your appointment to eternal life. Now that would be turning this text completely on its head and backwards and twisting the scripture to say that once you believe, then you're appointed to eternal life. See, this scripture is saying all who were appointed to eternal life believed. So first comes the appointment, then comes the believing. See, first you're chosen before you obtain salvation. First comes the appointment before you believe. 
When the Gentiles heard this, they glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. So first comes the appointment, then comes the believing. Notice, as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. So every single person that was appointed to eternal life believed. So what we're starting to see in these passages is that before people believe, they've been appointed to believe. Before people obtained salvation, they were chosen for salvation. Consider Jesus' words, All the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no wise cast out. In the same way, people are chosen before they obtain salvation, they are appointed before they believe, they are given to the Son before they even come to him. All the Father gives to me will come to me. So they're given to Jesus before they even come to him. All the Father gives to me will come to me. See, Jesus is saying that they will all come, every single one of them, as many as are appointed to eternal life believed. Every single person that is appointed to eternal life will believe. Every single person who is chosen will obtain salvation. All the Father has given to Jesus will come to him throughout the course of human history. So what we see when we look at these passages, and nothing's going to get lost in translation here because we're leaving it up on the screen. What we can see here is that people are chosen before they obtain salvation. They are appointed to eternal life before they believe, and they're given to the Son before they even come to him. And I try to drive home to these people that hold the free will all the time. Are you one of those people that have come to Jesus? Are you one of those people that have come to Jesus and according to his word, you will never be cast out? Do you believe that? Do you believe what Jesus says that the one who comes to him will never be cast out? Well, do you also believe Jesus when he says, all the father gives to me will come to me? That the reason why you even came to Jesus is because you were given by the father. Now, people can come up with all kinds of human excuses and reasons and opinions and ideas of why they came to Jesus. Well, I heard a sermon. My parents were Christian. I read the Bible and I decided to make the right choice sometime in my life to come to Jesus. But the divine perspective from God's mind and how he's revealed it, the reason why we come to him are not any humanistic reasons we can come up with. All the Father gives to me will come to me. It's a definite statement that all the Father gives will come. Every single one of them will come. And the reason isn't because you went to church, you heard a sermon, because your neighbor preached the gospel. It's because you were given by the Father to the Son. And all the Father gives to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. So before people even come to Jesus, they've been given by the Father. Before they even believe they're appointed to eternal life, before they obtain salvation, they've been chosen. If we consider the words of Jesus here in John chapter 6, it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So Jesus is saying, every man that has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Every single one of them that has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So before people even come to Jesus, they are hearing and they are learning from the Father. This has to do with the sanctifying work of the Spirit on the ones God has chosen. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, beloved of the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. The Father is doing a sanctifying work of the Spirit, teaching people about Christ so that they learn about him, so that they come to him, so that they believe in the truth. So what Jesus is saying is there's no situation where people are hearing and learning from the Father, but they're not coming to me. He's saying that everybody who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So there's antecedent conditions of why we come to Jesus, and it has nothing to do with a great sermon that we heard. We picked up the Bible and we understood things on our own. We made the right choice and said a prayer after we heard a sermon on the radio. No, the reason why we came to Jesus is we heard and learned from the Father, and everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. God is doing a sanctifying work of the Spirit on the ones he's chosen to be saved so that they come to Christ. And Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me. They will all collectively and equally come throughout the course of human history, and the ones who come will never be cast out. Now the ones that are given to Jesus by the Father, according to Jesus, will hear his voice. 
if you consider when Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one will snatch them out of his hand. I and my Father are one. So we see in this passage, Jesus referenced those that are given to him again. Remember, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And Jesus is saying that he gives them eternal life, they shall never perish, no one will snatch them out of his hand, and his Father who has given them to him. So again, Jesus referenced those that are given to him before they even come. And Jesus is saying, those that are given will hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. I give them eternal life, they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me. So who are the ones that hear his voice? The ones that are given to him. All the Father gives to me will come to me. The ones that are given are the ones that hear his voice. And all of them will hear his voice and all of them will come. Jesus is not giving us a situation where some people are hearing his voice but they're not coming. Jesus is saying that all the Father gives will come and all his sheep that are given will hear his voice and they will follow him and he will give them eternal life. So Jesus is given definite statements here when he says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, I give them eternal life. These are absolute statements. They will hear his voice, they will follow, he will give them eternal life. Now wouldn't you agree that in order to hear his voice, there has to be a calling, there has to be some kind of call. To hear someone's voice, they have to be calling, they have to be speaking, right? There has to be some kind of call. Well. That's how the scripture lays this out when it says consider your own calling. Those are the people that are hearing his voice. Consider your own calling, brother. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. The debased and the despised things God has chosen, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, that no man may boast before God. But by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, and wisdom, so that just as it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. So when it says, consider your own calling, brother, and not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to flesh, have been called. This is telling us that, consider your own calling when you heard his voice, my sheep hear my voice, that not many hear his voice, not many are called, not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty and according to the flesh hear his voice, they are not called. It goes on to talk about the people that do hear his voice, the people that God calls, they are the weak, the despised, the foolish things of this world. It says God has called these people individually, effectually, particularly, has chosen these people, and then by God's own doing, placed them into Christ Jesus. It says by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. So you can't come up with a scenario now and say, well, it's by my free will decision that I'm in Christ Jesus. It's by my choice that I'm the one that called out to God, and so therefore I chose, I called out to God by my doing, I'm in Christ Jesus. No, this says that it's a particular individual effectual calling on the ones God has chosen, and then by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. So when the free will advocates boast in their own calling and their own choice and by their own doing that they're in Christ Jesus, they're turning this scripture completely on its head and they're reversing the text and its meaning. Yes, it's true that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, but why are they calling upon him? It's because God is doing a sanctifying work by the Spirit, so that they believe in the truth. See, the Scripture says, this one thing I want to make known to you, no one speaking of the Spirit of God can say Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. See, no one can call upon the name of the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So to be able to call upon the name of the Lord, there has to be a work of the Spirit upon them. Brothers and sisters, Beloved of God, we're always bound to thank God for you. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief in the truth. There's a sanctifying work of the Spirit on the people that God has chosen to be saved so that they call upon the name of the Lord and so they can make that confession unto salvation, something they cannot do independent from the Spirit. This one thing I want to make known to you, no one speaking of the Spirit of God can say Jesus is accursed, and no one, a universal claim, and no one can say that Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 
So to be able to make the confession unto salvation, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That confession made unto salvation is brought to you by the sanctifying work of the Spirit so that you believe in the truth and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And this has to do with purposes of grace that God had planned before the foundation of the world. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So before the ages began, God had purposes of grace. And then he says he saved us and called us with a holy calling. See, he saved us and called us with a holy calling. When we look at this calling, only his sheep hear his voice. Consider your own calling. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen. God has chosen. God has chosen. So God has chosen people that he will call into salvation because of his own purposes of grace. Notice this is before the foundation of the world, before the commencement of time. God already has a plan. He's already going to work it out throughout the course of human history. He had purposes of grace given us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Before the ages began, God chose people for salvation. That they were given to the Son from the very beginning, chosen to be saved. That there would be a sanctifying work of the Spirit upon them so that they would believe in the truth that the Father would teach them about the Son, and all who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me, and they hear the voice of the shepherd throughout the course of human history. And by God's doing, the scripture says, we are placed in Christ Jesus. By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. How many people are saying by implication and outright that by what they have done, by their choices, by their decision, by their understanding, they are now in Christ Jesus? Free will is the position that by your own doing, you're in Christ Jesus. By what you have done, you have placed yourself in Christ Jesus. When the Bible says the very opposite, by his own doing, by what God has done, by his choice, by his calling, he's placed us into Christ Jesus. So I might wrap this video up here, brothers and sisters. I think that's enough to keep on the grill of consideration, some things to meditate on. And again, sorry for no intro or outro. I'll go ahead and give you the outro song. I'll sing it for you. And I have no doubt I'm going to get myself unfurled From this lonely, coiled-up world Jesus going to be here He's going to be here soon I need to get that fixed. I need to get that outro and intro fixed, brothers and sisters. Anyways, God bless. Hope your night or day is going good. Take care.